Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Good morning to all the saints. Good morning, good morning. To those who are streaming with us on Facebook, and for those who will be joining on Facebook later, and for those who are here in the sanctuary. Good morning to you. I pray that we'll have a wonderful day. This day, the world is celebrating um, Valentine's Day, which is a worldly, worldly love. But we know that there is no greater love than the love of God. God loves all of us. Let us accept that love that he has bestowed upon all of us. Our opening hymn will be taken from hymn 38, and I just call the first theme to come up and we'll sing that song, that, that, that hymn and they will go into a time of praise and worship. M38 on the seats, maybe a forty or so. Let us all stand as we sing this song. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Yeah, 3-8.
glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Mm. Just in case you have come today and you don't feel so welcome, 
Remember that we are just hosts and hostesses who are perhaps doing a poor job. Yes, yes. But the blessed Holy Spirit is here this morning yes. to envelop you with his comfort, yes, 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 to envelop yes. you with his love. Yes. And where the people of God are joined together yes. in unity, yes. in oneness of spirit and in sincerity, yes. the presence of God is with us. Yes, yes. And so I welcome you all to worship today, yes. whether you're in the physical church or your online welcome to service yes. and let us just give god all the glory yes. all the honor yes. and all the love yes. that is due to his matchless yes. name amen 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 Good morning, church. Good morning, Sister Ellis. How are we feeling? Are you feeling blessed? Yes. God is good? All the time. And all the time? God is good. All right, so this morning I'm coming with the intercessory prayer. But before I get into it, I want us to just quickly sing a prayer chorus, creating me a clean heart. After two, one, two. Jesus, that your spirit that lives inside of us will never leave us nor forsake 
forsake us. Oh. And we thank you that even in those moments when we feel distant from you, that you are the one that, that drifted, that we were the ones that drifted, mm. and that we can always trust mm. that you are there waiting with open arms, like you waited for the prodigal son to return home to you, Jesus. Because your word says that when we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. Heavenly Father, help us to stand on that truth this morning. Help us to stand on the truth that even when we don't feel your presence this morning, God, that you are with us. You are with us everywhere we go. Heavenly Father, help us not to lean on our own understanding, but to acknowledge you in every aspect of our lives. Everywhere we go, mighty God, to go with you, to bring you with us. Help our minds to stay focused on you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, this morning I bring before your throne, before the foot of your cross, Sister Vernica. Mm. Heavenly Father, you see what's happening with her leg. Her foot is aching. Heavenly Father, Jehovah Rapha, in the name of Jesus, whatever is causing that pain, I uproot it now in the name of Jesus. I declare that she will not leave this sanctuary the same way she came, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, let healing be her portion this morning, in Jesus' name. Let this be the fastest healing she has ever received, in the name of Jesus. Because mighty God, your word already told us that by your strength, Christ, we are healed and your word cannot return to you void oh God it shall go out in the direction in which you sent it you didn't say we will be healed you said we are healed already so heavenly father whatever is aching anybody else in this sanctuary right now heavenly father we stand on our healing right now as I'm praying for sister Vernica whoever else is aching can receive their healing right now whatever parts of your body is aching God is touching that area right now from the crown of your head to the very soul of your feet, mighty God, Holy Spirit, oh Lord Jesus, I pray that you just take over our bodies now, mighty God, I pray, oh Lord, that you ignite the fire of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us right now, mighty God, because we are just clay jars, we are just vessels housing the treasure, which is the Holy Spirit of God. Heavenly Father, I ask that you take control of this body, this body which is your temple. We thank you, God, that you, you saw so worth saving that you decided to die on the cross for our sins. Even today, on Valentine's Day, we thank you that the greatest love story that was ever told is the one where you came, you sacrificed, you died for our sins, mighty God. We thank you that even those who can't celebrate our physical and earthly partner this morning, that we can celebrate that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords says that nothing can separate us from his love. We thank you this morning that all things work together for the good for them that love you, Jesus. We thank you, mighty God, that when the enemy seeks to condemn, when the enemy seeks to tempt, that, Lord, there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, them that walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Heavenly Father, help us to live lives that are spirit-led this morning in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I put before you Misha Jackson and family. Heavenly Father, Misha Jackson, she wants to come to you, Lord. She wants to surrender to you, Lord, but something is holding her back. The God of this age has blinded her. And we are asking Jesus right now that you remove the veil from her eyes that the enemy has put before her. That has told her that there is nothing good in Jesus. That has told her that she should wait. That she should prolong surrendering her life to you. We trample upon the lies and the schemes of the enemy that seeks to play Misha's mind this morning in the name of Jesus. And we ask so that you will so supernaturally surround her with the company with the person that will lead her to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Misha's salvation this morning in the name of Jesus. We declare that she will give her life to you. She will come and be a minister for you, God. Heavenly Father, I pray for her very family, that Lord, that you will be upon them, that you will cover them, that you will shield them mighty, God, that you will lead them to you, that you will lead them in the way everlasting. Nara is the way to life, mighty God. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will lead Lead her and her family to that way, that narrow way that leads to you. You are the gateway. There is no other way to eternal life but through you, Jesus. You are the way, the truth, and the life. 
You are the gate to everything, anything we want in this life. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will reveal that truth to Misha this morning. Wherever she is, I thank you, Jesus, that you are an omnipresent God. That I can pray for her hair and wherever she is, you are touching her mind. In the name of Jesus. You are bringing comfort to her soul. In the name of Jesus. You are bringing healing to her family. In the name of Jesus. You are bringing provision to Jehovah Jireh to her family. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I put her before your throne and I thank you, Jesus, that Misha Jackson will give her life to you in the name of Jesus. I put before you Brother Andrew and his wife. Oh Lord. Brother Andrew and his wife. I put them before your throne, mighty God. Lord, you see and know more than we see and know God. We don't need to know everything because you know everything. Lord, I put them before you. Their union before you. Man, Lord, your word is whatever you put together, no one can put a, no one can put asunder. Whatever you put together, mighty God. Let no enemy, no devil from hell put it asunder. Lord, I pray that you strengthen their marriage. I pray, mighty God, against those spirits that seek to attack his wife in her mind. I trample upon the spirit of depression. I trample upon the spirit of suicide that makes her feel like her life isn't worth living. Heavenly Father, I pray, Jesus, that wherever she is right now, that you will visit her, mighty God, that you will reveal her, yourself to her in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, give her a supernatural encounter with you right now in the name of Jesus. Continue to strengthen Brother Andrew, that he may not give up on her, just like you will never give up on her. And let her know, God, that you are with her, that your comfort is with her, and that even though that she's going through the tribulations, no, mighty God, your peace is with her. There is purpose in her pain. She will come out on the other side, and she will minister to people who are going through what she, what you will deliver her from right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, mighty God, that when you deliver her, that she can be a walking testimony, that she can minister to other depressed souls and say, God, I was here, but God did this for me, and he can do it for you too. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, that you just deliver her. I pray for divine intervention in her mind, emotional healing. Oh, God, I pray for her daughter, oh, Jesus, that she may grow in you, that they may grow her up in you, that she may not, I break every generational curse upon her life, from her father's side, on her mother's side, from 10 years back, 20 years back, 100 years back, I break it now in the name of Jesus. She will grow up to glorify you. She will grow up to live a life that, that honors you, mighty God. Our purpose in this life is to glorify you. That's our only purpose. Mighty God, I thank you that she will grow up to walk in her purpose, mighty God. I thank you, Jesus, that your, that your hand is upon that family in the name of Jesus. That you are providing for them. That you are healing them. That you are shielding them now in the name of Jesus. Cover them, God, under your blood. I put before you Brother Patrick and Sister Gordon. Brother Patrick and Sister Gordon. Lord, I don't know where they are right now, but you know. You know, mighty God. You are limitless. There are no limits to you, God. You, you are in every area of this earth right now. Lord, I pray for them. I pray, mighty God, that you comfort them. Yes. I pray, mighty God, that whatever it is that may be attacking them, whatever it is that may be plaguing their mind, their, their heart, whatever it is, mighty God, in their home, whatever struggles they're going through, mighty God, we all have a silent battle. I pray that whatever their silent battle is, God, that you fight for them, Jesus. That you fight for them because you were the victor's crown. I thank you, mighty God, that we are more than conquerors. You didn't say we're conquerors, God. You said we are more than conquer us through you, Jesus. I thank you, God, that we don't fight our own battles, but that you fight for us. Continue to fight for us, Jesus. Heavenly Father, give us the strength that we don't have because we are weak without you, God. But your strength is made perfect in our weakness. So I will boast in my weakness, God, because your strength is made perfect when I am weak. Heavenly Father, wherever Brother Patrick and Sister Gordon is weak this morning, I thank you that you are strengthening them now in Jesus' name. I thank you that you are also strengthening Sister Denise and her family. I lift her family before you and before your throne in the name of Jesus. I lift her children before you, God. Oh, Lord. Lord, lay your hand upon her children. Oh, God. I pray, mighty God, that her children 
children will be an example to their generation. To this generation, mighty God, I pray, mighty God, that they are walking testimonies. I pray, mighty God, oh Lord, that you will just continue to use them. That Lord, that your light, that their light, the light that is in them, because we are the light of the world through you, God. That we, that their light will so shine to those around them. Heavenly Father, I pray that you provide for this family. I pray, mighty God, that you comfort this family. You shield this family. Every family represented here today. Heavenly Father, I pray that even the very homes that we have left behind to come and worship you, we thank you, God, that our cupboards are never running dry. We thank you, God, that your anointing is upon our homes in the name of Jesus, that there is a hedge, a protective hedge, a supernatural covering upon every home represented here today in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray for the shepherd that you have placed upon this sanctuary. Pastor Mark and his family, Lord, I pray that you will strengthen him and his ministry. I pray, God, that you will grant him the wisdom and the spiritual understanding to lead this flock that you have put before him in the name of Jesus. And remind him, God, that he is not leading us alone, but that you are that you are working through him. I pray, mighty God, even as he will bring the word today, God, that you will speak through him to minister to somebody, anybody, everybody in this sanctuary this morning in the name of Jesus. Let us not leave here, God, the same way that we came in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray that you just give us a heart of worship this morning. Heavenly Father, I pray that you continue to cover us, to guide us, protect us in our going out and our coming in, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, that God, that we have nothing to fear because we do not have the spirit of fear, but we have the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Help us to walk in that. When the enemy throws those thoughts at us, those condemnations, because we're fearful, mighty God, we cancel that. We send it back to the sender, mighty God. The spirit of fear, we trample upon you. We say, get out of here in the name of Jesus because we have power, we have love, we have the authority to trample upon every scorpion and serpent of every power that the enemy possesses that he will come at us one way and he has to flee before us seven ways in the name of Jesus. Oh, mighty God. We bless your name, God, because your name is above every name, both in this age and in the age to come. We lift your name on high, Lord God. And we thank you that you are working now in every aisle and every row, in every family, in every heart right now, in the name of Jesus. I cast this prayer out to you now, thanking you, God, that you hear me, that you always hear me, that you are interceding now on my behalf according to your will. Let your will be done for this church. Let your will be done for this church in Jesus' mighty name. Whoa! Mm. Friends, uh, 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 the Spirit of God is moving. Mm. moving among, among mm. us. Mm. I always want to thank mm. Sister mm. Teddy Carr mm. and Sister Nastasia Ellis mm. and doing the, the welcome mm. and, the, and the intercessor prayer respectively for us. Thank you very much. Mm. Continue the same vein, Sister Nastasia. Continue to let the Holy Spirit use and lead and guide you. And accept you, 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 you really have a ministry in, 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 in praying. Keep it up. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to wish all of you a happy Valentine's Day. The scripture says that you know, we must, we, um, they must know that we are Christian. We are love. We need to love each other. We need to love everyone. Everyone, ever, 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 ever yeah. you know. But I want to take this time to wish my wife. Yeah. You know, yeah. I have a privilege to do it today because I'm here. Yeah. 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 So I just want to wish my Bonanonos wife. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 As Mr. Wood said, mm. you know, it's a smart move. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sir. You know, Happy Valentine's Day, my darling. Mm. You know, and I, I think that Daniel, Daniel, um, you know, emulating me at, at home. He said, thank you, thank you, my babes for dinner. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, I, I love from the, bottom of my, from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> and, you know, and although we might love, you know, our, our, our spouses, you know, we can't love them as much as our God loves Hallelujah. them. Hallelujah. And our God loves all of us. Hallelujah. You know, let us remember that. Yes. Now, this time, I just want to ask Pastor Mark to 
come with the notices and the offering of the collective just after. I said that's a very smart move. Anyway. <laughs> Those are smart moves, you know, for us and or else. <laughs> but let me, let me also add it to the Valentine's Day feelings. Yes, yes. Um, well, my wife is not in church. She's at church. She was here this morning for Sunday school. But today is Love FM. One twenty-eight years of celebration. And you know, as a family, we are very close with love. And so Vashti is carrying out something over there, just on, just in Portmore, just right down the road. They're having their service today, but she'll soon be back. So um, let me um, apologize for the rest of my family. But let me celebrate with you all on this special day. You know, um, Valentine, you know, to everyone, as they say, it's, 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 it's for lovers, but it's for everybody. Yes, it's yes. for everybody. Yes. And I want to wish you all the best. Yes, today, you and your Valentine, you and your family, have a wonderful and a blessed day. Also, uh, there's just one thing I um, also want to, before the, the notice also, um, I know that uh, there is someone here for the first time this morning. And so I'm gonna ask that person to stand, that 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 handsome gentleman that is looking behind him. All right, it's your first time. Can we ask you to stand and just give us your name, please? My name is Larry. Larry. And I'm from Greater Portmore Day. Okay, so he's from Greater Portmore Day. Taylor. Let us put our hands together and we welcome you. Um, so Larry, it's my distance neighbor in the same community. And so he, he, he's here this morning, and I want to say thanks for coming out this morning. Uh, just one more thing. Uh, so, Sister Sylvia, we are glad that you're back. Yeah. I know that you were in the hospital, and so we are glad that you're back. And God is strengthening you, and we thank God for that. God bless you, and blessing to everyone. Um, just a reminder, a reminder of the Ash Wednesday contribution we know normally. Well, Ash Wednesday is the 19th, right? Yes, I think. Um, next week, Wednesday. This week, the 17th. This Wednesday. Thank you very much. So we would have been heading to St. Anne for our grand time. But this year will be no valid, no, valid no Ash Wednesday. All right, because as we know what is happening in the country, we cannot bring that type of crowd talking about eight, 900 people from across the mission. So we, we wouldn't be able to do that. But what they're asking, um, you know, a lot of us would go down and spend two, three thousand dollars eating fish and jerk pork and buying food yeah. and all the rest. And so what they're asking as a major fundraiser for the organization is that they're just asking us to make a contribution as individual. They're saying, you know, the, the teens, the children, the teens can give five. The adults, working adults, asking to give a thousand. But that won't be collected until the end of March. Right, so we have time to do that. Yeah. So we'll keep reminding you. Um, Greater Portmore Tabernacle presents our barbecue. Yes, barbecue 2021, April 23rd will be our barbecue. All right, and we will have, you know, just, just take out service and delivery 10 to 4. We finish at 4, all right, because we want to stay in the guidelines of, of the government. All right, so the tickets will be ready by next week. They're almost through, finished. And so, um, uh, please purchase a ticket for you and for a family member, all right, so that we can give our support to this. All right, so that's April the 23rd. And please contact Sister Veronica in any case that you need to after this, all right? Also, uh, this Saturday, a reminder, this Saturday, February the 20th, is it February the 20th? Yeah, February the 20th, all right, is 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. will be our continuation of our leaders meeting. It's already on the schedule, all right? So this Saturday will be our leaders meeting training, all right? And it's from 4 to 5.30. We will have that. Our morning's devotion, let me thank all the ministers again. Our morning's devotion is from 7.30 a.m. to 8. 
Alright, so please tune in each morning, Monday to Saturday, each morning. Alright, we will have our morning devotion. Alright, uh, also our Bible study, 7.30 p.m. And <clears throat> this Wednesday night, we will begin a new topic dealing with the studies of the last days. So we are going to take a look at a number of things that is happening in the last day. We are on Zoom, we are on sorry, Facebook Live. All right, you can see it after Instagram and those things. All right, and we will be within the next two weeks also having it on the Zoom platform where there can be more interaction. And the youth meeting, yes, we want to congratulate the young people again for their youth meeting last night. Again, I was on, on a very important topic, a topic dealing with abortion, and I think they did well. So let us continue to pray for our young people, 7 p.m. each night. All right, on Zoom until they say sometime might be in the space, but for now, I know they're on the Zoom um, platform. But last night it was such a, a wonderful time dealing with the problem. As we know, the country is now faced with that decision to be made dealing with abortion. Have a wonderful and a godly day. Can I pray, Steve? Yes, Lord. Let's come while we collect the offering. Ushers. Thank, thank, thank Pastor Mark for doing the welcome. 
and for the ushers for collecting the, the offering and the, and Sister Casey and for leading us as we collect the offering. At this time we'll have the, the scripture reading as right, will be done by Sister Veronica. And it's taken from Jude chapter Jude 1 uh, from 14 to 24. Right? Jude chapter 1, 14 to 24. And after that, we'll have our brother Raphael who come with our special. And after Brother Raphael, then Pastor will come. Okay, so now the scripture reading is taken from Jude chapter 1, 14 to 24. Glory be to God. Glory be to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Glory be to God.
uh, welcome as you look sometimes, sister. Uh, sister Tracy, mommy. Um, nice having you this morning with us, and I'm not sure of the the name of the other person that is sitting. Nice having you this morning with us too. I want you to turn with me. Well, the passage that was read, Jude, chapter one. one. I was laughing when Sister Veronica came up because again, you know, I, I have a way sometimes of giving a passage and when I look again, it's supposed to be another passage. <laughs> but the latter verse, verse 24 and 25 is the key verse there, which you will hear me speak to also. But I want you to turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter 3. So, Ephesians chapter 3, I'll be saying something on Jude, the doxology. But turn to Ephesians chapter 3, and I'll just read the doxology, again, that was read earlier, from Jude. Verse 24, now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory, majesty, dominion, power both now and forevermore and turn to Ephesians now chapter 3 let me welcome everyone this morning and welcome those who are streaming with us we are extremely proud that you are streaming with us this morning and we want to thank the Lord for your continual streaming with us. Many of you have been faithful all these months. And we give God thanks. So thank you this morning for streaming. And even some of our members who are not here today. I see you are streaming. God bless you. Ephesians chapter 3. And I really want to read verse 14. The truth is this, this is a two-part message. And this was really the second part of the message. But I change it to the first part because it carries this love theme. Alright, that I want to inch on too. But it's a two-part message. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. The Apostle Paul here is praying a prayer. And he says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. From whom the old family in heaven and earth got its name. That, and listen to prayer. Paul said, I'm praying that God will grant you according to the riches of his grace through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the length, the width, the depth and the height. And to know the love of Christ. Which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes. And verse 20, now to him who is able. I love that. that that's, that's, that's it there. Now to him who is able to do abundantly above that we ask or think to the power that is working in us by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Father, Bless your words to our heart. I pray for attentive hearts and attentive minds. And I pray that my heart also will be in a place of readiness as I share through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me take off the jacket a little, please. Those who know that, 
when you're preaching in jacket, if you get too excited. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I just feel a message that will get me excited. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So let me take it off from now. Jude. I want to title this. As I said, it's a two series title, and this is the second part, but I brought it forward. How big is your God? How big is your God? How big is your God? And so in Ephesians chapter 3, after contemplating such a marvelous spiritual experience, in the earlier part of the chapter, it is no wonder Paul burst forth in a doxology. A fitting doxology. A fitting benediction to such a prayer. Paul did not waste words. Yes? He did not waste words. Every word counted in this scripture and in the doxology. In this text, Paul was asking God, Church, I want to listen because I believe God has a word this morning. Paul was asking God for two things that seems and is impossible. Have you ever asked God for something that seems impossible? You ask God and you yourself know in your mind like you know so that thing when I ask God for this no, this no have no possibility but we still ask God and so Paul asked God for two things in this text in this prayer that Paul knew very well deemed impossible and I'm going to show you why he was asking God, first of all, he was asking God for knowledge that passes all other knowledge. I want to follow me. I'll read verse 17. It says that Christ may dwell, no, this is his prayer, you know, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love. That you may be, that you may able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passed knowledge. Yes. Paul was asking something of God. He says, "I want the Christians in Ephesians to know your love, which passed knowledge." In other words, the people that can't understand this. Paul was saying, God, show us this love that surpasses all human understanding. He was asking God for something beyond knowledge. He was praying and asking God for an understanding. He was saying, God, help us. Help those in Ephesians to understand the broadness of his love. The length the width, the breadth, the depth, and the height. As he prayed right here, he said that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. And that you might be rooted and grounded in love. That you may be able to comprehend, to understand with all the same what is the width. So first of all, Paul was here asking God for the believers. He prayed this prayer for them as he asked God for them to understand the width of his love. The whiteness of God's love. Yes. But I heard a songwriter said, it's so wide, you can't get around it. Yeah. So deep. Soon come to the death. Yeah. It's so wide. Paul pray, God help them to understand the whiteness of your love. He was asking God of something because the love of God is so wide. We can't get around it and we can't even understand this. This love has no 
no boundary. This love has no limit. This love goes beyond religion. This love goes beyond race. This love goes beyond ethnic group. This love goes beyond everything that we can even fathom in this life. How oh, big is your God? I'm coming down. How oh, big is your God? Paul says, I know my God is big. That is the reason why I'm asking such a prayer. And so, he's saying, you know what? The love of God is so wide. Paul also asks, they also want to know the length of his love. But we also understand from scripture that his love has no length. You can't measure it. The Bible says his mercy is there. His mercy is endure forever. How long? Forever. So Paul was here asking. I want to follow me now. Paul was here asking God. Help these Christians and myself to understand the wideness of your love. But when we go into the scripture and look and realize you can't get around the wideness of God's love. You cannot understand it. But I'm going to tell you why Paul asked that. Secondly, he asked, Lord, that they might know the length of your love. But the Bible said that is mercy. It endures forever. It not have the length. How long is it? Forever. They also asked for the depth of his love. Paul said that you might know the depth of his love. But as the song says, I heard somebody make mention. It's so wide. You can't get around it. It's so deep. You can't get under it. It's so high. You can't get over it. Brothers and sisters, the love of God compasses every knowledge that we can understand in this life. And so Paul asked for them to understand this and to know this. He want them to know what is the height of his love. You can only know the depth of his love when you go back to Calvary. If you really want to know the depths of God's love, go back to Calvary. Right at the foot of the cross. He wants them to know the heights of his love. But I heard one scripture says, as high as the song says, as high as the heavens is above. So far is the love of God above us. So they could not even fathom about his love. How big is your God? How big is your God? Because this is just setting the pace to ask you some question. How big is your God? How big is your God? Brothers and sisters, you will not know the love by simple hearing about it. You can't know this love by simple hearing about it. You have to come and taste Hallelujah. this love. And so I share that if I am on stage right now and so I bend down and draw out a nice ice cream. And so I'm an old-fashioned man so I'm going to know and then I will taste Devon's throat and think I'm an old-fashioned man. Young, old, but young. And I have a nice big ice cream. Roman Reyes, man, what the young people have skeleton face? They have the whole cream. <laughs> Give me that. That one. Roman Reyes and Grape Nut. Yes, they want all type of thing. And I am tasting and eating this ice cream. And for every time I lick the ice cream, I said, Whoa! We don't understand all this good. And the more I lick Mr. Water, I drop from some of but I continue to lick this ice cream and tell you how nice it is. Yes, yes. But until you taste it, <laughs> until you come and taste and see that the Lord is good, yes. then you can hear all this and it means nothing. Yes. Come and taste. Taste yes. it yourself, man. Taste yes, the love of God yourself. Yes. Yes. So no matter how much we tell you how high and deep, and why the love of God is until you test the love of God. Yes, 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 yes. 
until you know the blood he shed that reaches down to fallen men that lifts us up out of sin where you are fallen until you know that how it feels to know that God is real then you know nothing until you know the love of God it's so high you can't get over it it's so wide you can't get around it it's so deep you can't get under it the love of God Paul was praying something that he knew was impossible for them to know when he prayed it and I'm coming to why he prayed it but the second thing Paul prayed for here was not only that this is the second thing that Paul prayed for the second thing Paul prayed for is that they might be filled with all the fullness of God. Brothers and sisters, this is beyond our grasp in understanding the fullness of God. Brethren, we are limited, we, we cannot fathom and understand right now the fullness of God. Yes, we might be, we are experiencing the fullness, but we cannot even fathom, understand the fullness of God. How big is your God? And so he said, I'm praying that they might be filled with the fullness of God. How big is your God? Solomon, when he was building the temple, he says, God, you're bigger than the temple. The temple cannot hold you. The temple cannot contain God. The psalms it says, where can I go to escape your presence? Where can I go? Because even the darkest of night is as day to you. There's nowhere you can go to escape the presence of God. Yet Paul was praying that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. After Paul prayed, he went to the next verse. Now I want you to watch me now. No. Paul prayed, and let me read verse 17 again to 19. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. That you might be rooted and grounded in love. That you may be able to understand, to comprehend with everybody else what is the, 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 the depth, the height, the width, and the length of your love. To know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul prayed two things that the believers would not be able to understand in its fullest. In themselves. But he jumped over to verse 20 to a doxology where the message in the room. He said, but now unto him who is able. Paul says, yes I understand. I know that I'm praying for something that we would not be able to fathom. I'm praying that you might know the length and the depth of God's love, but you would not be able to do that within yourself. I'm praying that you may understand the fullness of God, but even that you were not even able to fathom this fullness. But he says, I know something. He says, yes, this is what I know. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that it had work in you Paul went to say God is able how big is your God how big is your God if you don't get nothing today, I want you to keep this, what I'm going to say now. Put it in the sticky side of your mind. Write it in your corner, your Bible. Put it somewhere. Difficulty. Difficulty must be measured by the agent who is doing the work. Yeah, man, I know that go over your head a little bit. So I can do it again. Difficulty must be measured by the agent, the person who is doing the work. 
So all be by your God then. Eh? All big is your God. I'm gonna say something on this. Now, if you need, if you are having some difficulty with the engine, don't call IT. Wrong agent. Wrong agent. Don't call him. Wrong agent. Remember what I said? No, I, I'm making a point. Difficulty must be measured by the agent who is doing the work. So you can't give IT to fix an engine. It's going to be impossible. If you want to do some painting job, don't give Neil and Russian see there yesterday. Don't give Neil and Russian. He's on it. He's on it. Don't give Neil. I, I am the person who did. You notice the difference? Don't give Neil and Russian. Not good agent. That job is going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult, brothers and sisters. If you need, if you need somebody, <laughs> I don't want trouble. But if you need somebody. Do some yeah. teaching in the classroom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who in Africa, church? <laughs> oh, no one give me that name there. Who in Africa? <laughs> Where's that? Where's that? Who in Africa? Batska! <laughs> Don't call Batska! <laughs> Don't call Batska! He's not gonna finish the class. That's what I didn't say that. <laughs> Teaching to be done. Call Sister Imogene, yeah. Sister Shelley, and all the teachers in the class. Yeah. Call them. Yeah. They will get the job done. Yes, yes, yes. The agent, the difficulty must be measured by the agent who is doing the work. Yeah. So if your agent is somebody who don't know the work, do not call me to do a brain surgery. I'm not a surgeon. Find yourself a surgeon because that job is going to be difficult for this agent. Yes. But if you give a surgeon that for do, yes. a simple thing that. Yes. No, hear my point. Hear my point. Hear the point. If your agent, when it comes to deliverance, yes. is different and not God, yes. then you're not the right agent. Yes. If God is the agent who is doing the work in your life, then all things are possible. That is the reason why Paul came back and said, But now unto him who is heaven. He realized that the, the, the Ephesians they were not able to do this and to understand it. But he says, Now unto him who is able. your God. How big is your God? God make all things possible. God said to Jeremiah, nothing is too hard for me. Nothing is too hard for God. We have an agent who not not too hard for him. How big is our God? When the doctor say, I can't do anything else, we have an agent who knows how to work miracles. When the doctor says, it's the last stage, it's the last point. When the doctor said, there's nothing more we can do, I'm saying, Paul says, no, unto him. Who is able. Who is able. No, we hear what the doctor said, but Paul is saying, but now, unto him. Who is able? Yes. 
when you open tomorrow morning and you got the machine for a swipe and open the bank book and it's zero dollar. Hey. We have an agent. Yes. Yes. Who is able? Who says no good things will he withhold from them who walk upright. We have an agent. What seems impossible to us is possible to our agent because he is God. So when the doctor says that and when the bank book says that, when the body has said something else, when the body is saying something else. You know, yesterday, over the last four days, but yesterday it was so terrible. And I, yesterday I was talking to David about it when you were here. In my eel, Stavronica, I don't have a chance for Over the last four days, my eel, I've been paining me like, you know, I'm feeling like, when I call it spur, but I just feel joke like needle. Boop, boop, boop. And yesterday I was saying to David, you know, and David said, was sharing with me that they, that something you have to get an injection in it. No, he tells the injection, they are exempt me. <laughs> Stay with it for a little longer. <laughs> but I know who is able. I know who is able. I know who is able. Last night for every move me make, every move I make, me walk to the house I've been upping on my toe because it's paining me. But I don't know what happened. But I woke up this morning and I'm good. I know who is able. Who is able? When the mind is saying, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot forgive, I cannot, I cannot. God is saying, you are able to the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Now unto him who is able. Now, I want you to just skip to Jude a little for me. Before, sorry, before I get to Jude. Before I get to Jude, I want you to listen to this. Paul says, Now unto him that is able to do. Wow. But I want you to watch this, brothers and sisters, that when I serve a normal God, how big is your God? How you cage and back up God. That's how big you have your God. You know? Remember that? My God cannot be as big in your life as you want him to be. You must make God gigantic in your life. How big is your God? When situation arises, how big is your God? When doctor says something else, how big is your God? When your body is in pain and hurt, how big is your God? When the account is zero, how big is your God? When in your heart your mind you can't forgive them, how big is your God? Difficulty must be measured by the agent who is doing the work. Because when the surgeon, doctor, the surgeon, the brain surgeon come, a surgery is not a big thing for him. Hallelujah. When the mechanic come and him here start your engine, him say, alright, turn it off, go on. When you come back. And as you're gone, him does change to wire and say, him, him, him do some things. Because the, to the mechanic, the work is simple. So you can't get IT that job as I said. You can't get Neil and Russian painting job. You have to give me painting job. <laughs> give the right agent. When troubles in your life, brothers and sisters, when you are in difficulty, circumstance, whoever is your agent, determine 
how your job is going to get fixed. Who to get that? Now unto him that is the first three words able to do. So it says now unto him our agent is able to do. But it goes on to the next word he is not only doing but now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. So he is not only able to do brothers and sisters but he is able to do exceedingly. Not only brothers and sisters is able to do exceedingly. The next word says is able to do exceedingly abundantly. I thought that Paul stopped. But he went on and he says, Now unto him who is able to do. Is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even imagine how big is your God that's the question today we get the answer right here he's able to do exceedingly beyond what you're asking above and beyond what we're asking he's able to do that how big is your agent how big is your agent? There is power that is working in us. Brothers and sisters, there is a power that is working in us. And verse 20 said, according, the latter part of it, according to the power that is work in us. So what Paul is here saying is that there is a power that is working in the believer. Now, what is that for? My Bible told me the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Now, brothers, it's either you believe it or you don't. That's it. It's either you believe it or you don't. But the Bible says the power that raised Jesus from the dead when Jesus was in the tomb and on the third day that power said get up the bible says the power that raised jesus from the dead is the same power that lives in the believer brothers and sisters we are walking dynamites the same power that raised jesus from the dead is the same power that is in the life of the believers today so as I heard my sister intercede for us today, that same power, yes. that same power, but brethren, no, that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, minister as she prayed this morning, that same power, brethren, not an imitation, the same power, the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Spirit lives in all of us. The Bible says, Elijah closed the heavens for three days. And after that period, he opened it again. Three years, thank you very much. But you know what Hebrew goes on to say about him? He is just a man yes. like us. Yes. Yes. So you know what? It normalizes him. To say, no man, the man will close. It's, it's just a man like somebody like me, you know. Mm. Sometimes we see the people and Moses like them as some, some, some super. No, there are people like me and you. Yes. Have flesh and blood got you problem, have difficulty. Yes. But they know how to tap into the power. Yes. They know how to tap into the power. And let me just read Jude. In the doxology. Now to him. Who is able. To keep you from stumbling. Pastor Mark, boy, I'm gonna know how I'm gonna live that Christian life because boy, I'm gonna know I'm gonna to stumble too much. Boy, you know, I'm gonna check so I can live it because it's hard and you know, I'm not married yet and you know, I'm not have this yet, so I'm gonna know oh let me tell you what the Bible says. Now to him who is able to keep you 
from stumbling. He's able to keep you from stumbling. And it goes on to say, and to present you faultless, not sinless. So let us read it good enough. If you say sinless in your maybe somebody write it in. <laughs> but it says faultless, not sinless. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. How big is your God? I close with the scripture. Isaiah. Isaiah, this is a scripture that will start my second message on the topic. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, a powerful scripture. And I'll just read verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. But now, thus say the Lord, who created you, O Jacob. Thus say the Lord, who created you, O Neil. Thus say the Lord, who created you, Kenrick. Thus say the Lord, who created you, Nastasia. Thus say the Lord, who created and I can call everybody near. Who said this? And hear what he said, thus say the Lord. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Hallelujah. When you pass through the water, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall any or shall the flames scorch. For I am the Lord, your God, the only one of Israel, your Savior. God says, when you go through the floods, it will not overflow you. And when you go through the fire, God said it will not burn you. It will be not even a smoke like the Hebrew boy will smell upon them. How big is your God? How big is your God today? There is power. Wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Do you feel burdened down with sin? There is power in the blood. Do you feel burdened down by life the situation this morning? There is power. What have the doctor said to you? There is power. What is your present circumstances that you're going through now? There is power. What is that mountain that is in your mind now? You're seated here. Your body's here with me. But your mind is on the other side. You're in church this morning. But your mind is about. Is on something that you're going to face. Today. Tomorrow. How big is your God? How big is your God? How big is your God? The song says, How great is our God. Ask the praise team to join me. Sing with me. How great. Let us all stand. Is our God. Always sing. How great. How great is our God. Oh great, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And always sing, how great, how great is our God. Names above all names.
Hallelujah. How great is our God. See the not pastor, not the leaders, not your brother, your sister, no, not your wife or your husband. No unto him! Mm. There are some situations, Sister Anne-Marie can't comfort me with. No unto him! Hallelujah. There are some private yeah. things in all of our life that the spouse can't control. No unto him! 
No children can help this. Uh, no one do him. No doctor can help this. Uh, no one do him. Who is able to do? Immeasurably more than all we ask or even imagine. According to his mighty power that is at work in us. Now and forevermore. And God's people say, Amen. 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 And Amen. How big is your God? I pray that, you may be seated, I pray that as you leave today, as you leave today, you will ponder and so